Hi, I'm Emerald the Quilter. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you all my finished quilt box that I finished this past week. I have some happy mail to share with you, which I think is my backing for this quilt. I'm also going to show you how to create your borders. And at the end, I will discuss possibly the next charm pack quilt that I'm going to be working from the Perfect Five by It's So Emma. So watch till the end and if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. So here are my blocks. I'm going to show you each block one at a time. The one on the top is the one I made for you in last week's video. So I'm just going to set that one down here that has the porcupines on purple and I'm just going to set this off to the side. Here is my blue with green and green with purple stripes. And something I noticed while I was making my blocks was that I, because I had laid them out in order before sewing, I had actually set myself up to sew them in the right direction, which I did not intend to do. And I noticed that, for example, this one, it came out almost exactly perfect. And this block is offset on the stripe just a little bit right here. And it's okay with me, it doesn't bother me, but I was happy to see that they were all dead on or very close. Here is yellow with aqua, red with purple, purple with pink, green with a purple dot, yellow with pink, yellow and hot pink stripes, two of these pink and red florals, here is the ladybug on blue, two ladybugs on white, teal with yellow stripes, light blue with a light purple stripe, another ladybug on blue. Here are several dots. So this is the orange with white, red with pink dot, uh, aqua, which looks like yellow there, pink with an orange dot, Green floral, I know there's two of those. Here's that very large deer print. His nose is cut off just a little bit, but I'm happy to see that he's peeking through and you can see almost all his antlers and his beautiful eye. This is a really beautiful block. And squirrels, more squirrels. This has, it was hard for me to see but if you look closely, and I can't always tell which direction, but there is a bumblebee, and then these are eyes, and those are, it goes this way. Those are bears on there with the ladybug on its head. Not a ladybug, a bee on its head. Then we have the pink version of the porcupine. Another bear. purple with blue, the raccoon print that I really liked. Here's that other green floral, raccoon print on purple. And they're not facing the same way. I actually, when I got to that one, I changed it up because some of the raccoons were gonna be touching each other. And I remember I, I just rotated them. So green with aqua, blue with hot pink, Another deer, he's a little bit cut off more, but it's okay. And then one more bright purple with orange dot. So those are my blocks. 
I'm gonna get these up on the wall um, and show you the layout that they're supposed to be in. Um, but before I do that, I'm just gonna set these aside so I can show you this print that I had ordered for my backing. So let me just slide these over. Here is my Happy Mail. Just making sure that there's no fabric near my scissors. And it is my backing. And my binding. Yay! So exciting. I had forgotten which binding I ordered. It's very pretty very bright, very happy. And then here are those cute little raccoons. This one's holding on to a mostly eaten apple right there. How cute. Coming out of a garbage can, going into the garbage can. So funny, so adorable. I love it. So this will go on the backing. And I, what I, what I, also like about this backing is that when I choose my thread to quilt it, um, like the, even though this background fabric is a little bit more cream and this is definitely white here in the floral, it'll be close enough that I'll be happy with both sides of the quilting. So there's my backing and my binding. I'm gonna set these aside. And I'm gonna take the quilt that's behind me off the wall so that I can start laying this one out for you in the order of the hook. So this is what the quilt looks like. And here's the layout that I'm gonna be following. So let me get that quilt off of the wall for you and start putting these up on the wall. So I've got my wall cleared off and if you look in your pattern book, you see that the sugar cookie quilt layout has six blocks going across and six blocks going down. So what I think I'm gonna do is just start putting them up randomly and I maybe do some changes as I go before I start looking at if they're facing correct or not. So I've got my tray my design board. And I know that the raccoon print is definitely going to have to go in the middle. So he's going to go there. Purple. This is another, another purple. Blue. And I know that I want to spread out like this is a solid with a dot, solid with a dot. I want to spread that out. Purple raccoon. He can go on this end. Green floral. That's a different kind of purple. Purple and blue. Porcupine and pink. Mm. Honeybee. A squirrel. Orange, another green floral. Pink looks good there. Red has to be somewhere center because it's bold, just like this one is. I have another couple bold ones coming up. Three, four, five, six. So I need two more. Spread out those ladybugs. These two are kind of close, so I know I'm going to have to move them, but I think right now I'm just looking at color distribution and just trying to get an idea of what is going to go where.
Okay, so I'm noticing that I have all of these stripes right here, five of them, and all my dots are up, and then my porcupine, my very first one, he's right here. So it's, I'm at a point where I can start moving them around and see, you know, which dot I want where, which stripe I want where. And I've definitely got to spread these florals out with the larger prints so that they're mixed in. So there's like one, two, three here. So I'm definitely going to have to move this one. And then spread out that bold print. Maybe the ladybug, this ladybug can go under here. Maybe I'll bring this striped yellow up here. I have one, two, three dots, so one of these dots is going to have to go. I think this one. Porcupine. Start fixing these up a little bit. I'm going to bring this floral in. Maybe even bring this just like that. So red floral in, this squirrel also went in. And I think that I may need a floral here. What if I, nope, what if I, so because I have one red of these florals down here and then red here, so this one kind of has to be off to this side of the quilt. I think like that looks good. And then this one, I'm happy with that one because that's also the binding. And it's just, it'll be more spaced out that way. Yellow, I don't have yellow over here. And I have three, so these are green. This is a bold. This is another squirrel. The squirrels need to be spread out. My deer. My beautiful antlers. There's that one, so this one can go here. And probably move this away like this and then I think over here move the squirrel here and this green one here okay so I'm gonna have to step back maybe take a picture with my phone and then see just one more time if I'm liking the placement of these blocks. Here's what I decided on. I moved several around, but I'm ready now and I think I'm happy to go ahead and start rotating my blocks so that they're facing the correct way. And the sugar cookie quilt has that first row with the square in the corner on the right side. And then the second row, the square in the corner will be going on the left side and then it just alternates and also up, down, up, down. So I'm going to follow this and I'm going to rotate them appropriately. So this one goes up. No, this one starts down. This one goes up. This one then goes down. This one goes up, this one goes down, this one faces up. Okay, now I'm going to double check my pattern. So I have down, up, down, up, 
down up. Okay, now row two is on the left and it starts with the square going down. So left and it's down. Left, oh, that one is fine, up. Left, down, left, up, left, down, left, up, okay? And so, like I said, now they just, they alternate. So I'm going to do this quickly. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, those are on the right, 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 right. Now on the left, also, also down, start down. Yes, we always start down. Okay, so down and then. Down, up, down, up. Okay, so I have left, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, two more rows, starting on the right, down. So it's the right, 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 right. And last row on the left. Down, up, down, up, down, and up. Okay. Here it is. What do you think? We're pretty excited. They're all facing the correct direction and they're ready for me to sew in two rows. So I'm going to show the first two rows with you, um, sewing the rows together, the top one and the second one, and then show you how I put those two um, together and put them back on the wall so that you can see them. And I'll also show you at the sewing machine how to connect your borders. Here we are at the sewing machine. I have the top two rows pinned together and they are right at the intersection where the squares of the print and the background meet. And so I'm just gonna pin those. I didn't pin on the other side because there were no seams to interlock. I have my stitch set to one and a half. And I always take out those pins right before. I don't, um, ever sew on my pins intentionally. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, but I don't do it intentionally. more blocks to go. Just making sure that my 
edges are meeting up. You could avoid doing that altogether by just pinning, but um, because it's easy for me just to shift it with my fingernails, I do that just fine. And of course I make sure that the ends meet and, oops, and I adjust it um, as I go. And since I cut these pretty exact and I used a quarter inch seam all throughout, so there isn't much shuffling needing to be done here. Oh, that fabric flipped right before, so I just lifted the foot and flipped it back. Here we are at the last block. So I've sewn those together. I'm going to go ahead, clip these up, open them out, and then finish sewing the first two rows. And then I'll see you back at the design wall. Here are my top two rows sewn up. They're looking great. And it's a really good size. It's not big at all. And I also have my borders going all the way around so I don't lose them because I've left them around before and I have lost them. So they're safe on the wall. In my next video i will show you the completed quilt top so now it's time to look at which quilt will i be doing next and i'm going to ask for your help so i have in the category one charm pack two quilts left to make those are the animal crackers quilt and the ice box cookie quilt so let me show you what the animal crackers quilt looks like this one's got some thin pieces and the fabric that I chose is apricot and ash because the motifs in here are pretty small. So I think that I'll go with that one if I choose this pattern, or if you guys choose this pattern. And for the other option, Icebox Cookie Quilt, there is an accent fabric here which would allow me to showcase larger prints. And for that, I would love to use Solana because it has large sunflowers and a mini panel in here. And so comment below which one you would like to see in the next video. Would you like to see the quilt with apricot and ash or Solana? So let me know. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and I will have it ready for you next time to see. I'll prepare backing and I'll show you how I pin baste it for quilting. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and thank you so much for being here. Bye!